Hey you guys, it's Just Call Me Josh coming to you from Exit 52 off of I-84 in Hopewell Junction, New York. That's the exit for the Taconic Parkway. And uh, you actually got me coming back from a jaunt up in the Hudson Valley. Right now we're making our way back to the city from uh, Oxnest up, uh, up by Liberty. And um, we're going to be taking the Taconic State Parkway back toward New York City. And one of the immediate things you'll notice while we're making the transition from I-84 onto the Taconic is there's a lot of green. A lot of green, a lot of hills, a lot of trees, a lot of clear skies. That's because we're nowhere near New York City. We're up in the Hudson Valley right now in the town of uh, Hopewell Junction. And so around here, you see no tall buildings. You don't see anything like that up this way. It's fresh air, it's mountains, it's back roads, it's dirt roads. And it's I-84 and the Taconic Parkway. And uh, I guess the reason why I wanted to bring you guys on this trip is because a while ago, I mentioned something about road anxiety. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the Taconic State Parkway, the Taconic State Parkway is definitely one of those sources of my road anxiety. Or at least it was for a very long time, up until I actually got used to it. If you remember during the uh, initial conversation about road anxiety, we were on the Jackie Robinson Parkway up in, uh, up in Queens. And it was a little bit wider than this. It was a little bit faster than this, uh, even though the speed limit was about 45. Uh, as you can see, this is actually a bit narrower. And the limit here is about 50 to 55 miles an hour. One of the scary things about this parkway is how narrow it is at 50 to 55 miles an hour. And you don't need to be a long time driver to tell that uh, the higher the speed you go, the higher the chance of an accident uh, that's going to happen. As beautiful as this parkway is, and don't get me wrong, like it's really pretty. It's also very dangerous. Uh, the Taconic State Parkway has had its fair share of really tragic and really violent accidents. Even more so when there's any sort of precipitation on the ground, like in the fall or in the winter. Uh, where ice and uh, all sorts of other stuff can gather on the road and people will just wipe out because they're taking the parkway too fast. The curves on the parkway, they can be sweeping because they're coming off maybe the side of a hill or the side of a mountain or whatever. And you could take that curve a little too quickly and all of a sudden you lose control. And very quickly as a beginner driver or as a novice or as someone who's recently licensed, you begin to learn that this is one of those situations where you really need to be on your P's and Q's and you really have to be aware of the conditions that are around you. Defensive driving and driving for the conditions is definitely something you're going to want to make sure you keep handy with you on roads like these if you want to keep all four wheels on the ground. Keep in mind that the speed limit for 55 miles an hour or 90 kilometers an hour, they're designed for optimal driving conditions like sunlight and you know the kind of weather we're driving in now so theoretically it's okay to be around or at 55 miles an hour in the right hand lane in situations where there is inclement weather like rain or snow or hail or if there's black ice on the road this is definitely where your defensive driving and driving for the conditions will come into play you want to be well below that posted 55 mile an hour limit and probably I want to say more around 35 to 40 tops. There are situations where state troopers have pulled people over for a, adhering to the speed limit in hazardous conditions such as snow or ice or hail or something like that and they would get a citation for not driving for the conditions because there's a higher chance that they'll wipe out. And this next piece of advice goes for any freeway in any state. When you enter a freeway and you're not passing anyone, keep to the right-hand lane. In most states, including the state of New York, the right-hand lane is going to be where you always want to be. The left-hand lane in most states, including the state of New York, is usually used for passing. And then when people are finished overtaking, they safely get over into the right-hand lane. 
after indicating and resume their travel in the right hand lane kind of like what i'm doing now now you can tell here that i'm cruising around maybe 50 55 miles an hour and that's because that's the speed that i'm comfortable with i'm around maybe 52 53 miles an hour and i'm keeping in the right hand lane i'm going at my own speed i'm kind of cruising every once in a while i'm kind of scanning just to make sure there aren't any obstacles on either lane uh, every once in a while i'll take a look into my mirrors see what traffic might be doing behind me or if someone's uh, attempting to pass you know i make sure i provide just a little bit of extra leeway to see if they can maneuver safely and then i also pay attention to how far i am from the shoulder line on the right hand side uh, whenever i feel as if the center pavement markings really aren't doing much for me what i'll tend to do is i'll use the shoulder lines as a marker as a boundary to tell me where i'm supposed to be on the road fun fact there are some features of certain roads that actually provide some tactile and haptic feedback if you take a look on the right hand side you'll see grooves in the pavement that is a ripple strip that'll actually show you where the shoulder is and if you cross it your tires will vibrate and if you've ever driven in california or in virginia you might have come across this one device called the bot dot and there are dots that go between the lane markings of multi-lane highways so when you're inadvertently straddling a lane you'll also get the same feedback low and normal vision drivers can use those features as haptic feedback to help with maintaining lane placement what I'm also scanning for on the right hand side is whenever that right hand line, that shoulder line veers off to the right, that to me tells me that at least that lane is about to open up and uh, make another temporary lane for an exit. So, you know, I look for other markings on the road. And speaking of the markings, there's one thing that I really want to point out and it's the occasional yellow sign that appears on the right hand side of the road and they might appear on the left also but here in new york what they tend to do is they have your advisory signs the diamond signs with the, the clearance or the uh, downhill or whatever and some of them have a bright yellow strip on the pole and that's to get your attention to say hey there's a hazard that might be coming up and you might want to be on your toes for it. So think about it like this. You're making all of these assessments and all of these decisions at one time in a two ton vehicle at about 55 miles an hour while keeping in your lane and observing traffic and making sure that you have what it is you need to keep your trip going and then and only then can you actually admire just how beautiful this parkway is like seriously isn't, isn't it pretty passengers they look at this all day long and like eh, whatever but you no, you're behind the wheel this is this is you this is you doing it so while you're making all of these decisions, while you're making all of these assessments, while you're keeping in mind your safety and the safety of your passengers and the safety of everyone else around you, do yourself a favor. And I'm gonna I'm gonna quote uh, a very famous and very humble uh, disc jockey slash radio personality. I don't know what they call him now, but um, Delilah. You guys know who Delilah is. You know, you're on these long distance drives and whatever, and it's starting to get really dark out. And so it's your mother or your aunt or whatever, and you guys are on the road, and like halfway through the trip. And maybe you're with your cousins, but everybody starts getting really quiet and you just start paying attention to the traffic on the road. And then one of them hears that voice. Did you have a busy day today? Rushing to meetings trying to take care of business, taking care of everything, except yourself. Well, now's the time you need to do that, don't you think? Kick off your shoes, take off the tie, sit back, relax, and enjoy. And 
at that point, everybody's wrapping himself in a blanket and it's time to go to sleep. Except for you, because, I mean, you're driving. And while you're behind the wheel and everybody else is relaxing, keep in mind that along with the responsibilities that you do have, and that you're very understanding of that, I'm sure of it, is that you've made it this far. This is the reward for the investment of time and patience and emotion and money that you put in. And it's the freedom to go and come as you please, not to just be, you know, beholden to public transportation, which is cool. I like public transportation. I love the subway. But you don't necessarily have to be beholden to somebody else's schedule anymore. And you know what? If you made it this far, you made that happen. The trees in front of you and the blue skies and the clouds and everything happening around you, this is what you were working toward. You got yourself to this point, and now you're at that point where you're going through it. It was your work, it was your drive, and it was your tenacity that got you into the driver's seat and on the highways. And it's more than okay to feel intimidated by this. It's more than okay to feel scared to, you know, to see other people, you know, that have been driving for a longer time and to be like, well, why can't I do this? It's it's human to do that. But in the same instance, think about it like this. Is that really fair to you? So before you even so much as put the key into the ignition, remember that not everyone is going to be as experienced as you and that you definitely aren't going to be experienced as anybody else on the road. And so you're going to encounter a variety of different people, people who have been on the road 20, 30, 40 years, and maybe people that have just started like you today. And so hang on to the skills that you've learned, hang on to the safe maneuvers that you were not taught, the defensive driving skills you've had to put into habit. Everything that got you to licensure and to having your permit and all the stuff that you learned on driving lessons, hang on to all of that and loosen your grip on the wheel and unclench your jaw and untense your shoulders and just do what you've been doing, well, since you got your permit. And if by some chance you make a mistake, remember, there are others that are on the road that have made mistakes. You are human. And you're doing everything you can right now to make sure that you and whoever's in the car with you gets to where they need to go safely. And comparing yourself to someone who may be more experienced on the road is doing you a massive injustice. Because not everybody takes the same path to licensure or to having a learner's permit as you did. Not everyone had to go into the same training. Maybe people learn differently. But now we're on the same road and we're sharing it. And most of all, take a look what's around you. Look at the trees, look at the sky. Always remember to breathe. And maybe turn off the air conditioner if you can help it. Open up the windows if you can help it. Breathe in some of the air if you can help it, you know? While you're doing 50, 55 miles an hour, it's actually a really cool way to keep yourself grounded. And a nice, easy grip on the steering wheel means that you'll be able to react quicker and you'll be able to react easier to make those sort of turns that maybe a road that's a bit wider might not require, but a road like this, where there happens to be a stone guardrail... <laughs> which scared the hell out of me when I was a, a beginner, might actually require. And so precision and margins of error are really, really tight. And most of all, the one thing that I always try to remember is I'm always going to learn something new. I'm always going to learn something new about my truck. I'm always going to learn something new about my skills, about my reflexes, about how I am when it comes to other vehicles around me about how I react to certain things, to how close I am to a guardrail, to where I am in lane markings, to certain highways that I'm on, 
and just overall it's it's going to be a learning experience you're never going to know everything so keep a nice and easy grip on the steering wheel no reason to get tense keep an eye on your speedometer make sure you're going fast enough for traffic to keep up but not too fast so that conditions don't get the best of you keep a safe distance for cars in front of you remain alert but don't lose focus on what's around you because you could be so involved with everything going on that you lose focus on what's already there. And so, folks, I leave you here on the Taconic State Parkway in the Putnam Valley. Uh, coming up on Route 6, uh, Mayapack and Shrub Oak. And uh, if you like what you see, go ahead and hit that follow button. If you uh, really like what you see, go ahead and hit that bell and turn on all of your notifications. And you'll be notified whenever it is I make a new post. Don't forget also I have a YouTube channel where uh, this is going to be posted as well. Uh, which you'll be able to find all of these videos there and less of the other stuff. Thank you so much for keeping me company. And I hope to see you again really, really soon. Folks, my name is Joshua Cintron. I am a low vision driver with a bioptic lens licensed in the state of New York and specially trained on the use of using a bioptic lens while operating a motor vehicle in a safe manner. I am not a certified driver rehabilitation specialist. I have never been one, nor will I ever be. And any advice that you see here is definitely not a substitute for any formal training. So if you're low vision and you're interested in the bioptic driving program, Contact the local administrative body that governs the usage of motor vehicles in your neck of the woods. The reason why I'm making these videos is to share my personal experience. And the opinions and experiences that I share here are only my own. They do not reflect other drivers in the low vision community. Thanks again for watching and see you next time.